This is Blender 15 on how to uh, do video editing. I have Blender open and by we're using the default layout. If you pull this down, there's a bunch of different presets and we want to choose video editing. Um, this is basically the video editor. It's complete. Uh, it's not like a normal one, but once you figure out how to use it, it's pretty easy. So we're going to go down to add and we're going to load in stuff. So let's go in and I'm going to bring in an um, uh, image. Let me go to the desktop, start to grab some of these items. So we have a room rendering. Okay, we have a room rendering, we've added it in. Now, one thing is, is it's showing the image up here, um, but you're seeing the dash and this is the, the video editor. So if I actually hit the animation play, it actually played through and then it's gone. Problem is the default background is black um, and I find that difficult when you're trying to figure out the composition. So if you go in the file, use your preferences and then go into themes and then choose video sequence editor. It's preview background, sorry. So preview background right there, if we slide and adjust this, now it can do the standard gray and now it's easier to see what's actually happening. Let's uh, bring in some other items. So add movie. And we have three movies. And I brought in all three and I put them in order. I use shift click to select them. And you can see that if I hold down left mouse button, I can grab any and move it back and forth. So I want to do the ball animation next. So I'll make sure that that's lined up. And then the lamp animation. Once again, uh, right mouse button to select it. And then let's just, uh, and then finally dynamics. Now I'm going to zoom out. You can see the lamp animation is pretty long. And it's 336. The other thing you can do is you can also butt these against each other to get an exact lineup if you prefer going that way. Okay. So let's uh, play this through and see what we got. Okay, we got this image, ball animation basically go in and we have our lamp animation and then when we're done with that okay now the thing is you'll notice that we repeat at this point and that's because the end frame is at 250 so we want to increase this and you go you see how we can kind of increase it uh, we can also play around with dragging this in and out if we want Now the animation when we play will actually play from here to here. Um, you can also bring in music, so I'm going to go add sound, and here's a wave file, and I'll bring that in, and I'm going to bring that down and line that up. Okay, this is the lowest track you can go, so I'm going to take this image and pull it up here, and then we're also going to take this and move that and get the track going at this point. So I'll rewind, hit play. Okay, so we have our, um, our volume and everything set up in there, and you can see there's different parameters, so if we find that it's a little loud, we can knock down the volume and adjust that, so now if I hit it, it shouldn't be as loud. And what we want to do next is um, basically add an intro to it. So let me uh, zoom out real quick, and the first thing we want to do is we want to adjust the song. So if I hold down at the end, and I pull this little adjust and bring that to a stop. For the title, what we can do is open up, and I'm using Inkscape, which is a, kind of a free open source equivalent of Illustrator. Um, I'm going to go into Document Properties and Pixels, and let's go back and see what size we need. So I'm going to pull and check our properties, and right now we have 1920 by 1080, 50%, by 1080, okay, 1920 by 1080, okay, so we've resized that, we have that frame all done, and now we can uh, add a, a background to this, so we'll draw out our background, and then we can change uh, by 10. Nine, 
twenty by ten eighty. Okay. Okay, fill colors black, change it to whatever. Um, and then what we want to do at this point is add our text. Okay, text box. There we go. Uh, my real Snyder. And ideally, you want to put your name plus a uh, um, email. Those are the two big things you want to make sure that you include on any real just in case that it gets lost. And then we can uh, crank up the point size, keep on going, and center it, and adjust as needed, and get this layout all set up. And then we have that done, file, and export bitmap. And we'll use it the same size. It looks like there's one pixel that's off, but let's uh, just export this for the time being. So here's my bitmap. I'll bring it in and hit uh, save. Uh, export it. Okay, that's exported. Now I can minimize this out. Come back in, uh, add, bring in an image, bitmap, add image, and now we can bring that to here. And that can be our intro. Okay, so let's uh, get our sound longer and our end longer. Okay, and once we get what we'd like to do, uh, we're good to go. And the other thing that you can do is you can also add um, a bunch of um, transitions. So you can see there's effect strips which enable you to uh, change the size, transform, add, subtract fade, etc. So all you do is you just select what you want, you add it, and then you can use it. So there's ones to fade in and out, there's one to fade between frames, so there's um, a good amount of control with that. Uh, when you get what you like, I'm going to change this to 15 frames a second. Uh, we got that set up to 15 frames a second. And then we just got to do our output, so we want to save it as a H.264, go into a coding. I recommend using the QuickTime movie, but if you want, you can use another one. Everything else is good to go. Now, the only thing you want to make sure is right now there's um, no audio codec, so if you render it out right now, there's no audio. So you want to pick uh, one of these. Um, it's kind of up to you, but you just got to pick a compression. And now we can literally just, we just do render animation. And it's going to go through and render out these frames. So let's uh, open it and see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see it basically has everything set up. Now there's a couple um, issues. One, this isn't centered, and the other one is this room's actually distorted, so it's taking the image and it's stretching it out. Okay, so we're going to make two corrections in Blender. Um, we're going to add um, effects. So we want to select what we want to apply the effect to. Do Add and Effect Strip, and I'm just going to use Transform. And at this point, this is off center. So what I can do is I can go and change the position. The problem with that is it reveals the, the transparent background. So if I render this image, I get this checker pattern. Um, so what I can do is do uniform scale and increase it and then move it back and forth. And now I have that positioned. I want to select the image that we use for the room, which is naturally it's distorted because mm -hmm. it's trying to stretch the whole image. And uh, if I select the file all by itself and I go in and do image offset, it automatically sets it back to its original aspect ratio and, and everything, but the problem is the size is small. So we're going to add another transform. And for this transform, I'm going to do uniform scale, increase the size of the image, uh, position X, position Y, and kind of work this as needed to get it to the proper size because you can right click any of these and key so there's a lot of uh, control but that's the basics of setting up just a, a simple video which is sufficient for what you need for this class